in terms of raw computing power, Bitcoin is 600 times more powerful than the next biggest computer cluster or the next biggest supercomputer. Bitcoin is by far the world's biggest cluster of computing power. And yet, in terms of what we can do with it, it's quite limited. You can hodl BTC and you can transfer BTC from one address to another, but little else. Now, even that is a huge accomplishment. This massive computer cluster is used to secure the world's most secure, most sovereign asset. The one asset, BTC, that you can truly and reliably own forever. But Bitcoin could do so much more. Look across the wider crypto space and you see huge amounts of potential innovation happening on different blockchains. Smart contracts that allow for DAOs, decentralized organization of people, DeFi, the decentralized management of financial activity and creation of new financial tools, privacy systems, and incredible efforts to span and scale what we can do with crypto, both in terms of speed, throughput, cost, and the introduction of things like developing decentralized social networks, decentralized AI, decentralized all of those key digital economic systems that we are more and more relying on every single day. The world's largest supercomputer, Bitcoin, could be the core, the basis for an entire decentralized economy, a more private world, and a faster growing, true free economy where we unleash not just BTC, but the creativity, innovation of people around the world in a borderless economy. And yet, so far, we haven't seen this. Now, some people think that that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that the most secure, most reliable, most trusted chain with the largest computing power and the largest degree of security isn't doing all of these things because they're being done elsewhere. But the problem is that they're being done elsewhere poorly. The other infrastructures that we've developed in the crypto space simply do not have the security and the reliability of Bitcoin. They've been built like software. They've been built to move fast and break things. They've been built as experiments, not as the rock solid permaware into which you can pour your financial and economic energy and know that it will be there for your future and for your children's future. And real finance. 95% of what people want from pensions to mortgages, savings to investments, large infrastructure investments, all the way down to people's smallest savings account. Those are things which people demand decades of reliability for. And so what we have is a crypto economy which has become focused on gambling and Ponzinomics and short-term thinking because the infrastructure on which we have been building has allowed only short-term thinking because the infrastructure on which we're building is short-term. And so Bitcoin, this supercomputer of security, is the only system that we've built in the crypto space, which has long-term security and can be the infrastructure which allows us to move on to the next level. In order for Bitcoin to open the way for crypto to move beyond gambling and start providing for the needs of everyone from the smallest saver to the largest institution, Bitcoin needs eyes and a brain. Bitcoin needs to be able to have permissionless innovation. Bitcoin needs to be able to provide not just a basis for BTC, but for a large number of assets and not just allow you to transfer these assets from one person to another, but to manage these assets in sophisticated ways. If Bitcoin could give us DeFi, if Bitcoin could give us smart contracts, if Bitcoin could allow us to permissionlessly build a truly decentralized digital economy, then Bitcoin and crypto as a whole would be able to finally achieve the very lofty goals that we've been selling for Bitcoin and crypto for more than a decade now. So how can we make this happen? Well, the exciting thing is, it's happening right now. The key to unlocking all of this is the ability to take any VM, any compute and compile it to Bitcoin. 
We've developed the technologies to do this. We can now take any compute, we can take any VM, EVM, Solana VM, or any future VM, compile it down to a type of cryptography called zero-knowledge proof, which compresses that compute and writes that compute to Bitcoin, turning it into Bitcoin transactions, secured by the Bitcoin supercomputer, verified and validated by the Bitcoin supercomputer. In other words, already now, we have the power to do any compute on the world's most powerful computing cluster, the world's most secure computing cluster. The challenge now is making that something useful, something that developers will be able to build all of the things that we've imagined in crypto and many things beyond what we've been able to imagine on Bitcoin. And the key to unlocking that power is building an operating system that will connect the computations and applications that developers build to the security and compute of Bitcoin and also interoperably to each other. We call this kind of thing an operating system. We all know operating systems from our phones, from our computers. They are what connect the different applications and software that are running to the CPU, the GPU, and most importantly, to each other, creating one cohesive computing environment. What we're building right now is Bitcoin OS, the operating system for Bitcoin, which takes the breakthroughs that we've introduced, allowing any VM and any compute to be compiled to Bitcoin, and creating on top of that an operating system that turns Bitcoin into a computing system capable of doing anything, any compute, anything that developers and users can imagine. For almost its entire history, the story of crypto has been the story of two opposing forces. On the one hand, we've had Bitcoin, accepted, reliable, simple, something that we know is permanent and secure permaware. On the other hand, we've had crypto, which has brought a great deal of innovation, allowed the creation of many types of assets and the tooling and systems to manage those assets in ever more innovative and creative ways. And these had been like oil and water. We've had to choose between reliability and innovation. That period in crypto is coming to an end. We're now moving into phase two, crypto 2.0, where we can finally combine the reliability, simplicity, and permanence of Bitcoin with the potential to create any number of assets, compute them in any way, and manage them in ever more free and innovative and decentralized ways. This is what happens when we give Bitcoin the power of compute and crypto the security of Bitcoin. With Bitcoin OS, we're relying on cryptographic assurances. So long as there is even a single person in the world who is operating Bitcoin OS in a trustful way, Bitcoin OS remains trustless and secured by the full security of Bitcoin. This is a huge change. It finally means that we can bring what we've seen imagined in other places to Bitcoin trustlessly. So Bitcoin OS is not a new layer to Bitcoin, but rather an operating system deeply embedded in Bitcoin that allows for many things, including new layers. Allows for things like trustless bridging, rollups to Bitcoin, private, natively private transactions on Bitcoin, programmable tokens on Bitcoin. These are just some of the things that people are already starting to build on Bitcoin OS. One way to think about the Bitcoin OS, the boss revolution, is to think about how we today think about blockchains. We think about Bitcoin, security, Ethereum, smart contracts, Solana, speed, Monero, privacy, etc, etc, etc. But from now on, we'll be able to say that Bitcoin is security and smart contracts, security and privacy, security and speed, security and low cost transactions, security and tokens, or that Bitcoin is security and whatever use case you and other people are interested in. Different people are interested in managing their lives in different ways. 
Some people, their focus is privacy. Some people, their focus is investment. Some people, their focus is speculation. Some people, their focus is decentralized community. All of these are valuable. All of these make up part of a wider, vibrant, decentralized and borderless economy. And now, with Bitcoin OS, they can all be secured by Bitcoin. And so I, I want to reach out to all of the developers who are out there. There is an opportunity now to build on the solid, permanent foundations of Bitcoin to bring your users a greater degree of security than ever before, but perhaps more interesting to you to reach a much wider audience than ever before, to build on the world's largest crypto network, to build where the vast majority of assets in crypto already are, where the largest body of users is. Bitcoin OS has opened up entirely new vistas of opportunity, not just for users, but for developers as well, in terms of the scope of markets that are now available, that we can now target and conquer. We have been building Bitcoin OS really for one reason, to bring permissionless innovation to Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is the bedrock for a truly decentralized and free future for all of us. And that can only be truly expressed if anyone can build anything that they think is important or valuable on Bitcoin. So now that we have Bitcoin OS, now that we are rolling Bitcoin OS out on mainnet, now that we for the first time have upgraded Bitcoin permissionlessly, we have an operating system for the world. That operating system is Bitcoin. That operating system is Bitcoin OS. An operating system that I hope we can all come together on to build a future that looks very different from our past. A future more free, a future more decentralized, a future with fewer boundaries and borders and more connections and available opportunity to everyone in the world. This is the journey that crypto has always been on. This is the purpose that Bitcoin has always had. And now, now we have the technology that is making it a reality.